Good morning. Wanted to read to you today from 2 Kings chapter 5. This is out of the life of Elisha, one of my favorite Old Testament biblical persons. Can't wait to meet Elisha when I get to heaven and get a chance to visit with him. After all, I mean, he was kind of bald. I'm kind of bald. You know, he's the one who called the she-bears out of the wood to maul the guys who, young men who were mocking him because of his baldness. I mean, how could you not want to meet a guy like that? This is 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16, and then also 20 through 22. Naaman the prophet has come to the king of Israel and said, uh, I'm here to be healed. <laughs> the king is overcome. Who... Who does this? Who comes here to be healed by me? And we can't heal you. And Elisha sends a message to the king. Send him to me. Send him to me. And then uh, Naaman comes. Elisha gives him the, the command uh, through his servant. Go wash in the river seven times. Eventually, after getting over his anger, Naaman does that. He's cleansed. He's healed. And then he comes back to Elisha and offers him gifts. And pick up in verse 16. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept any gifts. And though Naaman urged him to take the gift, Elisha refused. Then down in verse 20 it says, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, my master should not have let this Aramean get away without accepting any of his gifts. As surely as the Lord lives, I will chase after him and get something from him. So Gehazi set off after Naaman. When Naaman saw Gehazi running after him, he climbed down from his chariot and went to meet him. Is everything all right? Naaman asked. Yes, Gehazi said, but my master has sent me to tell you that two young prophets from the hill country of Ephraim have just arrived. He would like 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing to give to them. Boy, it's a good thing that Elisha has a servant like Gehazi looking after his healing ministry. Yeah, I mean... Everyone knows that any good faith healer has to make money off of it. I mean, you know, you, you've seen them, the good ones. The ones that say, send in your $20 gift and I'll send you this flask of healing water. And as a special bonus, I'll throw in this free bag of holy dirt. Oh, and for only $20 more, I'll send you these seeds of blessing that you can plant in your holy dirt and you can water with your healing water and you can see the special plants of blessing grow. You know, everybody needs to have some kind of income off of their healing ministry, right? Yep, good thing Gehazi was there to look after his master. You can't just go around giving away healing and blessing and salvation for free. I mean, who does such a thing? Hmm. Pray with me. Lord, so often we try to make this something that we can bargain for and buy. We try to make our relationship with you a barter, a sale. You give us salvation, I give you obedience. You give us blessing, I give you prayer. You give us healing, I give you time in the word and in church. We try to buy that which can't be bought. And that 
which never should be sold. Remind us, God, that the only way that we receive any of this is because of your grace, because you choose to give that which we could never afford to purchase. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends, hope you join us again tomorrow. God bless you.